Welcome to Season 2 of the Practicing Presence Podcast, where spiritual formation is fueled through a variety of practices rather than a single prescriptive time of devotion, where we discuss different spiritual practices that help us be more present with God, others, and ourselves. What's going on, practitioners? What's up, friends? How we doing? So I think we're going to wrap up self-love as divine love. Yep. Um... I think, you know, when I set out with this idea in mind, I was just looking around throughout the Bible and theological conversations and all of the ways in which we are the image and representation of God. Yeah. And then the pneumatological ways in which um, the Spirit lives within us and indwells us. Yeah. Um, We are divine. Sure. We are divine. Um, and so, you know, I was always fascinated with, with myself. And this, I think I told you this earlier outside, but, you know, I have now, I got one requirement left uh, to graduate with my MTS from Baylor. Um, but it's not a credit requirement. Yeah. So it's just like one thing I got left to do and I'm done. I've taken all my classes. I don't have any classes left. That will be the third degree that I have completed that is designed to teach you how to be a pastor and do the God things. Yeah. I don't feel like any of them did a good job of telling me how to care for myself. Mm. Heard. They told me how to provide care to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, they told me how to have theological conversations, and they t taught me a lot of things that I think are very valuable things. But they certainly did not teach me how to care for myself. And if I believe that I am a divine person, that I am an image-bearing divine person, mm -hmm. then I should care for myself. If I'm caring sure. for other people, I should be caring for myself as well. And that is why Jesus says... That the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God. And the second is to love your neighbor what? As yourself. This is why I have realized that I have a problem where we say love God and love people. Mm. Because I can love God and love people at the expense of my own health and journey. Yeah. But I can't love God with everything I have and love people while neglecting myself, if I'm loving people as I love myself. Right. Love your neighbor as yourself. Um, and so the journey of self-love as divine love was born. Yeah. I think for me, this, this series really helped me just like start building a framework and thinking that like it is okay to pursue the things that you need for yourself to be a healthy human being. You have to make space for that. You, you absolutely have to. Um, but I was always told, um, this is like a religious trauma element. I'm realizing, um, over the, the, the span of this, the series, but like, I was always told that like I was a piece of shit. And that I needed to deny that and everything that it brought because, like, fundamentally, I'm an evil human being and I was only allowed to pursue the, the things that the church deemed as okay as yep. divine. Um, I could not pursue the things that... I could not pursue the divine in my own way. You even um, had to do it their way with an hour quiet time, mm -hmm. reading the Bible and praying every day. Go to church three times a week. Yeah, which just doesn't work. Um, I mean, it works for some, but it doesn't work for everybody. And this, like, yeah. uniformity element of the Christian, of, like, American white evangelicalism, you know, like, it's that, that uniformity piece is really harmful. 
um, and teaches you to neglect yourself. Like at a fundamental basic basis, it teaches you to deny everything about yourself. Yeah. Not just the, the things about yourself that are sinful, the things that are still in pursuit of death and pursue only life, but deny everything about yourself. Yeah. To deny everything about yourself, that you yourself are terrible and corrupt and there's no good value in you. And so anything you or your body wants is automatically bad because mm-hmm. you cannot even trust your body, mm-hmm. which I want to point this out. Clayton, when you get anxious, where do you feel that? My gut. Oh, in your body. Yeah. Um, might, might it be a little anxiety driving if you are walking through a parking lot and you see three large men in dark clothing following behind you? Hmm, yeah. Yeah. I mean, With, like, some intent. Yeah. Okay. You think that might be a little, like, anxiety heightening? Yeah. You think you might feel that in your body? Yeah. You think that might be a good thing for you to feel that in your body? For sure. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> evolutionary. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah. So, your body is literally designed yeah. to tell you when you are not safe. Right. And yet, theology fundamentalism told you you can't trust your body right because there's nothing good in you Mm -hmm. and so we have this entire conundrum that our body is designed as an like you are an integrated person so Mm -hmm. your body is designed to work within your integrated person to work towards your good right god indwells you and what's what's crazy to me is that like the, the the things that are basic. Oh, I need to drink. Oh, I need to eat. These things are accepted. Yeah. Like, your body does tell you these things. But anything outside of that, which, same sort of thing. My body tells me that I am hungry. Um, when my body tells me that, ow, that hurt, I learn something, I do something about it, I do something to fix it. So when my body is telling me that I am anxious, when my body is telling me well, that I... Well, but hang on. This is also part of the problem because toxic masculinity in the tradition right. that we grew up in, we were told that you're supposed to ignore your body's... Correct. Your body's teachings about pain. Mm-hmm. Well, pain don't hurt. Mm-hmm. So you ignore your body telling you those things hurt because that's what we do. The pain yeah. don't hurt. So you even, in those ways, you get told again, don't trust your body. It doesn't matter. You don't need to listen to it. Yeah. Which is incredibly harmful to the people in the tradition. Yeah, for sure. Like, you're, you're denying an entire part of what Jesus talked about as, like, uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Right? Like... We're, we're, we're talking about, or that's not Jesus. Jesus says all your mind, but still, like in the original Deuteronomy, it's like, love the Lord your God with your entire being. Yeah. Everything that makes you up, love God. Yeah. Um, you're denying an entire piece of that when you're not trusting your body. Yeah. When you're not trusting any of these things, pursuing these things that make up loving the Lord your God. Yeah is also pursuing the divine within yourself. Yeah. And making that connection and understanding that pursuing self-understanding in every which way through a true, like, biopsychosocial approach, like my social work brain kind of work in there. Yeah. That is divine pursuit. Yeah, for sure. That is divine love. For sure. Understanding how God works inside of me. And how and how God is stirring within you the desire to call that up and have you speak yep. that voice into the world as you mm-hmm. go about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you think if you looked over your life and said... Your Christian faith 
can be summarized as your pursuit of divine love. Your pursuit of a way to act your reciprocity of divine love. Yeah. So that means the divine loving you and you loving the divine. Mm-hmm. Would, w- what word would you say describes that experience, that holistic experience? If you were going to pick one word that describes that experience of your Christian faith as the pursuit of reciprocity of divine love, what's that word? Uh, resurrection. Okay. Restoration. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Something of progress. Yeah. Some something sort of, of, and not just like growth, but like big growth. Yeah. Right. Like complete change. Like journey or pilgrimage, maybe. Yeah. A big like marker of things are now different. To. Yeah. And would you say that you expect to ask yourself this again in the next 23 years of your life when you're 46? Yeah. And you will say that your faith is very different than it is then than it is today? Yeah, absolutely. That's because faith is a journey. Sure. This experience of faith is a journey. So this divine love, this pursuit of divine love This reciprocity of divine love is a journey. In the same way, Mm self-love is a journey. Mm -hmm. There will be a similar journey. I want you to compare the way in which your divine love journey has been. There are rocky moments. There are moments of uncertainty. There are days when it's hard. There are days when it's good. And there are days or seasons where it feels like we're surviving and thriving. Yeah. Because you know what? Sometimes surviving is thriving. Sure. Um. Your journey of self-love will mirror some of those same ebbs and flows. Yeah, and we talk about self-care a lot. Um, but I don't think we do it justice when, you know, we, we hear people talk about self-care as like, um, oh, my time to relax in the evening. That's a That could be an element of it. But it can't be the only element. No, you have to pursue self-care holistically. Yes, it has to be holistic. It it has to be including mind, body, and spirit. Um, there have there has to be elements of all of it, which we did. Um, the the rule of life, uh, God in my everything. I was just about to talk about this. Yeah, doing like some sort of rule of life as as your true holistic self care um and in that in creating that you are developing a, an infrastructure to begin to love yourself better yeah. and therefore to love god better yeah so and also to be able to love the people in your life better yeah if you love yourself better it's so much easier to love the people around you facts like this is why bullying is a problem. Like in, in, I don't know, even hell, I was about to say in middle school, but like we have bullies in like Fortune 500 companies. So like we, we had a bully as a president. Church. Yeah, we yeah. have bullies in the church. Like that's why this is a problem because they feel so bad about themselves. They try to push everyone else around. They don't love their community. They don't love the their people because they don't love themselves. They don't know how to love people because they can't love themselves. Or care for themselves. Or care for themselves. Yeah. So like, they're offloading their own traumas on people and those kinds of things. It, and it's also, let's not forget uh, 1 John 4, we know how to love because God first loved us, right? And so this this whole like trickle thing of like, like you were saying, love God, love people, love self. Yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be that. Progression. Love God, love people, love self. Because mm-hmm. um, you have to love your neighbor as yourself. And, you know, you brought up rule of life. Mm-hmm. And my mind was going there. So rule of life is super important. I wish somebody would have talked to me about rule of life long ago. Um, and in 2021, I read, I don't know, I think I read like 40-something books. Um 
My favorite book that I read in 2021 was a book called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, written by John Mark Comer. Clayton's heard me talk about this book all uh, a lot. And it is a book written by a guy who was pastoring a mega church um, in Portland, like the hub of secularism. Um, he stepped down to go be the campus pastor of one of the campuses of the church that he planted and live a more simplified life where he was not always so hurried. Yeah. That book, the second half or the third part of that book is about rule of life. I am having to reread that book right now as my final requirement for Baylor. I got one final requirement that's not a for credit. It's not a class, but I have to do something. It's like a requirement, but it's not a for credit. Right. Um, I have to read that book for this class. And so I'm reading it again because I'm a good student. Um, even though I've already read it, I'm reading it again. And I stand by that. If you are looking for a new, if you are looking for a way to enter into thinking about a rule of life, because that really is what we're talking about. Yeah. There is an entire podcast series on this podcast um, called Rule of Life or God in My Everything or something. We went through the entire book. It's a fantastic book. It's somewhere up here. It's around here somewhere. Anyways, oh, it's back right behind me. You can't see it. Anyways, we have an entire series there. But if you are looking for a single volume, you can read God in My Everything. But mm -hmm. I would really recommend, I think I would recommend more than God in My Everything, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Yeah. Um, I think, I think that is such a big problem, um, for just American culture. Um, I feel like it, it it's more of a problem for some than it is for others. Um, for Cullen is a three. <laughs> That's a big problem. Um, what's a big problem for everyone? Yeah, always, no, no, no. Yeah. I, I, I think that it is, but like, we also have the other side of that, that like, Getting busy for for some is hard, um, and so like it's not how he's defining busy because he would say we're busy in the way that we use social media. Heard. He's defining busy in a new way, and it works. sure 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 fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. So, anyways, yes, the what we are talking about is as a wrap up is a rule of life. And we have lots of resources around. You can also feel free to reach out to us. All of our stuff's linked um, if you want some help with your rule of life. But definitely love God, love people, love self. And the way in which you do that is a rule of life. Thanks for listening to the Practicing Presence podcast hosted by Wellhouse Church. Be sure to give us a rating and a review if you enjoyed the episode. It's free and it helps us immensely. Also, feel free to check out our other podcasts.